So when you have a different message formats to be handled or a message formats or a messages to be handled, it is always a better practice that you create operation specific rules. That means you can have a separate request and response rule for get cities by country and similarly you can have a separate request and response rule for get weather operation. <clears throat> because what happens if you configure a rule at a higher level, let's say at the port level or the service level, the same rule will be applicable to both the operations. So if there is any logical implementation that you are going to do with respect to one operation, the other operation might not work. And hence, it's always a better op option or a practice that when you have multiple operations within a single service, you can go ahead and configure operation specific rules. But when you have a service with a single operation, you can configure the rule at any level as it is does not have any impact. Okay. So once after you identify where exactly you need to configure this processing rules, you can hit on that processing rules button. Okay. So whether at the port level or the port operation level, hit on that processing rules. So when you hit on that, you can see a blue color window is going to appear at the down which is called as a policy configuration window. So over here we have to configure our policy. See the syntax or the logical flow is when your client triggers a request right it will be accepted through front side handler first. Once it is being accepted by the front side handler so before this you will have all the SSL and all the connection will be established. Then or here let me just write it as well. So your SSL connection is established and then your fence handler will accept that request and your XML manager will parse this message. Then followed by followed by your request will go to processing policy which is your policy once after it comes to the policy it will check for the request rule and if it is successfully executed within the rule we will have processing actions once after it is successfully executed the request will be sent to the backend server and once after your server responds with a response it will be accepted through a response rule. Within that you will have a processing action and finally once after it is processed you will send that response back to your client. So this will be the whole process of a transaction getting executed at the data power. Okay, so this will be the request rule process and this will be the response rule. So now if you want to create a new request rule, if you go to your policy configuration window, you can see there is a button called new rule. Just hit on that. It will take a name into consideration. If you don't want that name to be used, we can ch change this name as well. Let's say request rule. And you have rule direction. You have three directions, sorry, four, both directions, server to client client to the server and error. Since we are going to create a request rule, the direction is client to server. This will be the client who is going to send a request. The overall processing is will be done by the data part. So you can see the syntactical if you see here, this will be the client who will be triggering a request where you are getting the request over here and you will be doing the processing everything within this rule. And after this, this request, what you have configured or processed, you will send it to the backend server. Okay. So always request rule means client to server. Okay. So here, if you see, once you create a rule automatically, you can see this has come up here. Correct. We didn't add anything or we didn't modify anything. Automatically it has come up. So even if you try to create another rule, even in that rule also it will be available. See, second rule, cut. In both the rules, you have this action.